right to everybody welcome back to this video so we're still in the temporary recording area we've got a different view today because today we're going to be having a look at the Tobin Spirit Guide book so this is an awesome book if you're a Ghostbusters fan or if you've got a kid who's into Ghostbusters you may have remember Ghostbusters reference Tobin Spirit Guide a few times in the movie for referencing when they're looking up information about certain ghosts or hauntings. So now they've made this into an actual book, but it's been written as if it's been written by the actual Ghostbusters themselves, as well as the actual person that wrote it. So that's pretty cool. And I've also said it was illustrated by Kylie Hotz. So that's the f the female Ghostbuster from Extreme Ghostbusters who came into the comics as one of their assistants. So the, the front cover is pretty awesome. So you can see a little bit of stay puffed up there. I'm not entirely sure who that is. Is that Grundle or is that a terror dog? You've got a cool... Uh, what do you call it? Chris, Christmas Carol style Moogly logo so it's the circle the chains going through instead that's pretty cool let's have a look at the back so that gives you a hint of what the artwork's going to be like inside awesome black and whiteness obviously it's red on the cover so this just gives you a bit of information let's have a read Tobin spirit guide is a comprehensive supernatural encyclopedia used by the ghostbusters to research ghouls and ghosts for the first time, the public can finally pour through the pages of this legendary guide to learn all about the things that go bump in the night, from Class 5, Free Roaming Vapors, to Giant Slores. Fully updated by Dr. Ray Stans and Dr. Egon Spengler, Tobin's Spirit Guide, official Ghostbusters edition, explores the complete Ghostbusters universe, delving into supernatural phenomena from the movies, comics, animated shows, video games, and other aspects of the saga. Absorbing immersive... Absorbing, immersive, and filled with exclusive illustrations, Tobin Spirit Guide, the official Ghostbusters edition, is the ultimate guide to the franchise's rogues gallery of spirits, spectres, demons, and ghouls. So this came out in 2016, so I'm kind of late to the game and looking into this for my channel, but let's have a look. So, let's pull this bad boy open. So there's a better look at the cover ghost that looks even awesome. So as you can see... There's a foreword, I'm not going to read that. So I just want to have a look at the artwork and a uh, bit, little bits of snippets about the ghost. So we'll mainly be looking at it this way, but for some of the stuff we'll get full screen shots of the artwork on screen. So this is just talking about New York and why New York's a bit of a hub for spiritual activity. So Papi Sargassi, he was in the Ghostbusters video game. He was in the restaurant, and it may tell you that there. It's a seafood restaurant, it's the grasses was lost at sea. So yes, yeah, so it talks about seeing, but look at that artwork, that artwork is gorgeous. Just looking at things like this, so here we go. The the taxi driver goes, so I've got, I'll get this on full screen now, but just look at that artwork from Taxi Driver Ghost that was seen in the first Ghostbusters movie art. This kind of artwork reminds me of the Tales of the Crypt comic, creep show, things like that. It's absolutely fantastic horror comics that I grew up reading as a kid. So it gives you a bit more information about this because he's only on screen for maybe five, ten seconds tops. But this gives you a lot of a bit of his backstory. So i like you to take in that image a bit more and then we'll move on to the next page and have a quick look. So there's Slimer, aka the Green Ghost. So it's the Green Ghost, aka Slimer. This picture's cool. It does make Slimer look menacing because in the first movie, Slimer was a villain. He wasn't a piece of comedy like he was in the cartoon and ongoing. Slimer was an actual threat and he was vicious. So this kind of conveys that, which I do like. So we've got the Spider Witch, also from the Ghostbusters video game. So she was a boss in the Sedwick Hotel. And here we go, we've got the librarian, aka the Grey Lady. But look at our work, that screams horror comic. That just looks like, it definitely looks like something out of Tales from the Crypt comic. Or the Creep Shoulder movies. It's amazing, I love it. I could sit and look at this art all day, but I also do read this. I'm not just in it for the, for the pictures. Here we've got the Scullery Brothers from Ghostbusters 2 in the courtroom scene. So yeah, they do look even more menacing here than they did in the movie. They're a bit cartoonish in the movie, but they look great here. So we've got Ellen Gold. She was, she made an appearance in the game, or at least. Did I talk about that? Or is she from the comics? See, this is where I should notice stuff. It should pop back in. I'm pretty sure she was in the comics. Now that I remember, they went in a house. 
Uh, the Dream Ghost. This is the one that unzips Ray's trousers in the first Ghostbusters movie montage. Yeah, so it gives you a bit more information about where she came from. The Phantom Jogger from Ghostbusters 2. He looks a bit more decrepit there than he did in the movie. He just looked like a regular person in the movie. So this is section 2. Assorted apparitions. So let's see what kind of sorted apparitions we've got in here. Animated clothing. Crybaby ghosts. So that's just a freaky picture. Look at that. Some sort of ghost baby. Yeah, let's see. Let's keep going. Animal spirits. So that's just basic animal ghosts. Poltergeists. Internal spirits. Household spirits. Possessed of. There we go. Possessed objects. This talks about objects getting possessed, but obviously this picture is of fearsome flush from the real Ghostbusters toy line. I actually have that toy. We'll do a jump cut to me him sitting here right now. So yeah, so they've made it look even more terrifying than it actually was. Look at that. Imagine getting up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet and that's staring at you when you open the, the bathroom door. That would... You wouldn't need the toilet after that because you'd have already been. You would have already been. So here we go. Section 3. Meta Spectres. So... Minor demons, powerful ghosts, and other notable entities. Okay, so here we go. We've got a sad man from the Ghostbusters cartoon. He was actually quite creepy looking in the cartoon, but even they've made him even creepier looking here. Look at that. He should be in a film. He's fantastic. Look at his takes your eyes and everything. They should put him in a film. And this one, you've got a Ranana. I don't know what that's from. You've got Rao. The Collectors, they were quite big in the comics. Oh, the Boogeyman, he was great in the Ghostbusters animated show. He's even creepier looking here. Uh, so you can see the theme that they've just basically amped up the creepy factor for any Ghostbusters design for this. And then there's the Boogaloo, he was quite good in the cartoon, but even more terrifying here. Look at that. The detail is outstanding. I love this black and white art style. Absolutely love it. So who else we got here? We got Grundle. Grundle looks even more terrifying. So that was Grundle. It was in the cover. So it looks even more terrifying here than he did in the, the cartoon. The cartoon he was a bit creepy, but even worse here. We got Killer Watt. This is a ghost that's made of electricity. Yeah, and Hestro. And that's some amazing artwork. Just look at that. Lilith, it seems to be a woman that can turn into whatever that is. I haven't got this far in the book reading. Section 4, Gods and Major Demons. So, you can clearly see there's Vigo there. That looks like Sam Haim. I'm not sure what that is. Is it a ball count? Don't think it is. Oh, here we go. Prince Vigo of Carpathia from Ghostbusters 2. Now, look at that. Vigo just looks amazing. It's not as good as the actual painting of Vigo, but look at that. That is just awesome. That would make a great tattoo. I really would. It's metal as hell. Metal as hell. We've got a what? Now, what is it? What? <laughs> Sam Haim. Sam Hain, he was great in the Ghostbusters cartoon. He actually freaked me out a little bit as a kid. And if he looked like this, I don't know if I'd been able to watch it. Look at that. That is terrifying. That is amazing. Sam Hain is probably one of the most powerful ghosts that they came across in the cartoon. Cthulhu. No explanation needed there. A hob. And a rack. Okay. Don't recognise these ones. But the artwork is amazing. What else do we have? got a Lotan. I caught him in the Ghostbusters World game. The big whale thing. He's awesome. Look at that. He looks even better here than he did in the game. We've got this, what is he called? Dumaju. Dumaju is some sort of goat looking guy. Section 5, Gozer. So Gozer gets his, her own section. So there is Gozer's temple. Atop the... Dana Barrett's building. So that just looks amazing on its own. So there's Gozer, him herself. 
So it gives you all the information on Gozer, why Gozer's here, why Gozer's stuck as a stay puff marshmallow man. There's a minions of Gozer, Vince Gorfo and Corfo and Sue. They just look fan. That would make a great tattoo, actually. That terror dog. Fantastic artwork. Oof. And you've got Idolanas. Idolanas. I can never pronounce his name. He's the third minion of Gozer that was created in the comic. Pure threat to the Ghostbusters. Tried to get Gozer a brand new form other than the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, but failed. And then we've got Evil Shandor himself. The man who dedicated his life to worshipping Goza. But then turned on Goza after he died and Goza failed. If you play the Ghostbusters video game. Then we've got Tiamat, Goza's sister, brother. Whatever you wants to be. But this is the god of chaos. Well, goddess of chaos. So yeah, it's, it's a she. This is the goddess of chaos as Goza is the god of destruction. So yeah, she was in the comics and she posed a major threat to the Ghostbusters as well. It was fantastic. Oh, here we go, my boy, Stay Puffed. They've got him in evil form here. It's a great picture of Stay Puffed. Yeah, you can't say much more than that because there's not much detail you can put into this big lovable piece of fluff. But fantastic. Then what have we got here? Oh, we've got other forms of Goza. So we've got a Torb, which... Looks like something straight out of Warcraft or Lord of the Rings. Now I've got a Slore, which was mentioned in Ghostbusters 1 and made an appearance in the Ghostbusters video game as a juvenile Slore. These things are not to be taken lightly. And then that's us, and afterward, that's a nice picture of a ghost trap. I really like that. That would make a nice poster, in fact. That really would make a nice poster. So yeah, the afterword is from Egon Spengler, and that's the end of the book. I just wanted to quick flick through this book and see what I thought. If you're a Ghostbusters fan, I couldn't recommend this book enough. If you get, if you know anyone that's a Ghostbusters fan, it'll make a great gift for Christmas. Or kids, if they want to learn more about the backstory and lore of Ghostbusters, give it a bash. I highly recommend it. I've rambled on for a bit, for quite a bit longer than I expected. I wanted this to be like a quick five-minute video. I think we've doubled that. I've not checked the time. But yeah, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. If you like what you you've seen, like the channel. I've got I've got subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more Ghostbusters videos. I've got a lot more videos in video games as well. I'm going to be doing a lot more vivid content coming up. So if you want a wee notification, hit the bell, ding ding, and all that nonsense. And as always, don't forget, have a gudgeon.